Welcome to Quick Q&A, which is a new section that I'm starting in the channel, mostly because I haven't managed to finish the next tutorial yet, and I really wanted to make some shorter videos to keep the channel going week on week. I'm going to be answering a question specifically about Maya, and I'm going to try and do it quickly and to the point, which is going to be a real struggle for me, but I'm going to do my absolute best. If you're interested in learning how to take part, stay until the end of the video, and let's start off first of all by seeing a question that was submitted by Javier Mont. How can I animate an object independently from a motion path at the beginning and after a few frames continue the animation on the motion path? If I key the object it doesn't follow the motion path even if the motion path starts afterwards. So Javier has a scene where he's got a motion path and thanks to the email he sent me he actually is telling me that he wants to animate a character with a surfboard but I've got a skateboard over here so the first thing that Javier probably has in his scene is that if I go into the animation tools constraint and look for motion path and attach to motion path he probably has something like this where the skateboard is moving across the actual path like this and of course this is a constraint it is not something that actually has any keyframes it just has a beginning and an end and if I put this down to something like 60 frames like that the animation will hopefully now play by faster and finish over there fantastic and the other thing that i want to do is that i just want to come over here and actually make sure that the end of this animation is linear okay that's the speed i want the skateboard to be moving at and i'm committed that that's the motion path that i want i am going to attach kayla to the skateboard. The way that I'm going to get Kayla to hold on to the skateboard is by using constraints. No parenting, okay? And a constraint is basically just going to be like a parent that you can turn on and off. So I'm always going to choose the driver, which is the skateboard, it's the driving force, and Kayla, which is the driven over here. I'm going to go into my constraints, parent constraint, and I'm going to maintain my offset over here. This has to be turned on, okay? If I add this over here, now Kayla and the skateboard are happily moving away together. So I'll then go into the skateboard over here and I'm going to go into edit keys and I'm gonna bake these keys out. I'm gonna to go to bake simulation and the standard settings should be fine. And this is going to create a keyframe for every position on the motion path. So actually I can get rid of this spline, which is no longer working over here, and I still have the animation. And it's playing around like that. Now your interest in your scene was that you wanted some keyframes beforehand, and you see that I've actually made this part first. So what I can do is I can extend my timeline. I'm gonna do it by a random amount. I really feel like Doc Brown in Back to the Future where I'm kind of like saying, I'm sorry I haven't made this at the right scale, at the right size and everything. Cause it's kind of like I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible so I can post it today. And you'll see that I have the character not moving and then they start moving like this over here. So if I go into frame 29, over here and I go into Kayla's root controller where the parent constraint is and I set a key over here you're going to see that the skateboard just flies off by itself and that's because I've got now a new property over here called blend parent which if I key this property at frame 0 uh, sorry frame 29 it will be at a value of 1 which means the constraint is turned on which means that Kayla will move from the skateboard. Now, if I go to frame 28, the frame just before that starts, and I set this to zero, it's gonna drop a keyframe automatically. You can see I also get tangent handles there, and you'll see that basically what I'm doing is that I'm turning the constraint on and off. So I can go back into Kayla's root control over here, and prior to this pose, she can be anywhere she wants doing anything she wants and basically you can create an entire animation between frames 1 and 28 in my case and then she'll jump onto her skateboard and she'll just start moving away. I'm going to create a series of poses with uh, Kayla and I've just moved her back a few poses like that so you see that you can animate her in any way you want and again I'm just making sure that these are keyed and then I just could come like into the midpoint if I wanted to Again, could spend a lot of time doing all the animation I ever wanted. 
through here, through here, changing her pose so that she's in the air and everything else like that, and then making her come down here so that she lands just there onto the skateboard, and then she'll flip into there. So just really quick blocking like that. Again, trying not to be too precious about anything. Again, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Wonderful two second animation. And now that she's here, the other thing that we can do is that th this object over here can actually be constrained to her. So if I do the constraint the other way around, where Kayla is now the driving force on frame eight, and the skateboard is the driven, what I've ended up doing is I have a small piece of animation. Kayla is animated between frames eight and 29. I've got a constraint on the board turned on so that the board is constrained to Kayla between frames eight all the way to 18. At frame 18, I turn the constraint off and then I can keyframe animate the board falling to whichever position we want, which is the start of where the motion path was. And on frame 29, we're following the keyframes that were on the motion path originally, which we baked out, and Kayla is now constrained to the board. So constraints allow you to parent things on and off at specific times by setting keyframes, and they can be a bit tricky to set up sometimes, but it's probably a good uh, reason to run an entire tutorial on constraints as well. So I'll add that into the to-do list and we'll see what we can do about that. Okay, Javier, I hope that was useful. And if you wanna take part in quick Q&A, all you have to do is leave me a question either in one of my videos or on the community page, asking me a question. And the only rules are, it has to be something that I can answer within Maya between three to five minutes, okay? So anything that's short and easy to answer, I will go ahead and make a video every week and I will pick a question at random from all the comments that I receive. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. It really helps out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so before. And if you want to take part, again, remember that now you can ask me questions and I will try and make a video for you guys every week of one small question that I can answer in Maya. So until next week, keep learning, keep strong, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.